Let's talk about Foundations of Rome, a gorgeous game about architects, and we're going to compare it to Skyrise. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to talk about Foundations of Rome by Arcane Wonders Games. You can see the box over my shoulder behind me. That's a huge box that would take up the whole screen if I held it up for you like I normally do. Uh, but Foundations of Rome is another game, a city building game where your architects are placing buildings on a board, similar to a game that I talked about recently, Skyrise, which is a new game from Roxley. But we're going to compare these two uh, and talk a little bit about their similarities and differences. Foundations of Rome is a game for between two and five players. The version I have with the Monuments expansion also includes the five player expansion, the fifth player. So it regularly you'll get this game and it's two to four players, but the one I have is two to five. It works with kids age 14 and up, although the rules are simple enough that younger kids who are familiar with these kinds of games could definitely play. And games take about an hour to an hour and a half. Let's take a deeper look at Foundations of Rome by Arcane Wonders. This is another game with gorgeous 3D buildings. And, and again, we've got the sun drop uh, paint jobs on these things to, to give them a bit of a two-tone kind of a color. You've, I've got the, the red player and the blue player out here. Their buildings are the same. You can tell who owns what by the color of the little chip that's been pushed into each of these buildings. Now, they do come, the, the version I have, again, they do come in these trays. Everything's covered. There's a lid for the trays as well and a lid for, for your little markers that are going to go on the board, uh, but everything stays in place. So nothing moves around once this game is packed away. It makes it very easy to set up and play. We are talking about a game that's on the heavier end of light in terms of its complexity. So it is light. It, it kind of maybe pokes up into the medium level. There are modular rules and expansions that you can add to the games that does make things a bit more complicated. Uh, certainly mixes things up in terms of the strategy. What you're trying to do in Foundations of Rome is be the player who earns the most glory after three eras of play. And glory is really just victory points. How do you earn those points? Well, it's by placing buildings on the board and buildings that are adjacent to each other are going to earn you a certain number of points. Buildings that increase population have a huge impact on the game as well. So you're playing through three eras of play and each era is going to end when you run out of cards from the deck. There's going to be a stack of cards on each of these spots on the deed board. Once you run out of cards here and you run out of cards in the marketplace, that's the end of the era. And conveniently, how do you score things at the end of each era? All of the rules are right there on the board, so it makes it super easy. You've got a separate board that tracks victory points and tracks your population. Like I said, population is going to contribute to some glory as well. So when we're talking about comparing Foundations of Rome to Skyrise, this one does take up a bit more space. You've got this board, you've got the deed board, you've got the main game board, and then you've got the big tray of your buildings that each player is going to be placing on the board. You might have watched the unboxing video that I did for this game. I mean, it was a 20 pound box. This game is huge. And so it did come with a first player marker that's a statue. Looks like a senator here. Uh, and you've got some metal coins as well. The coins are going to be used to buy those deeds. And you saw on the deed marketplace that the cost of those deeds is going to range from two all the way up to 10 coins. So you're going to be spending money. You need to place buildings to earn lots of money in this game too. At the start of the game, players are going to get some coins. The first player gets the fewest coins and then it increases by one as you go around the table. You're also going to have a hand of these deeds. So you start the game already owning a few properties and maybe I didn't shuffle them up very well here, but you can see that I've placed my blue markers to show that the blue player owns these spaces. And you're, you're going to do one of three things on your turn. And the turns do go pretty quickly. I mean, the hard part, I think, or the longest part is going to be thinking about what you want to do on your turn. You can choose to buy a deed from that deed board. Like I said, you pay your two coins or three coins or 10 coins, and then you're going to be able to place one of your pieces on the board corresponding to the space that's on that deed. Instead of buying another deed, you might decide to build a building. 
and Foundations of Rome has three kinds of buildings in the base game. If you're playing with the monument, Monuments expansion, you'll also have some monuments that you might have the option to place. So you're looking at the arrangement of the spaces you own, and I might decide to replace one of these little individual ones with a little building. This is a bakery that's going to earn me one coin when I collect income. Or maybe I want to place a larger building because I do have a little grouping of three here. And I could place this building instead. And that is a, 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 a forum for artists. And that's going to earn two coins when I collect income. But now I've got three of these little standees back in my board. And I can start to buy some more deeds and place them around here. Like I said, there are three kinds of buildings. You've got these brownish ones. Those are market buildings. Those are going to earn you coins. You've got these more gold colored buildings and these are going to increase your population. You do get victory points for having a larger population. And then there's these gray ones. These are civic buildings and these have varying impact depending on the buildings that are around them. This one, for example, is going to earn you one victory point for each building that's touching it. Now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it here on the little camera, but if I hold this up, as you take these buildings off, it's showing you on your tray what that building is earning you once it's on the board. So now I'm going to be getting four coins if both of these are placed on the board, and I'll earn some victory points for the buildings once the era ends, and I'm starting to count up those points. The final action that you have the option to perform is to collect income. So now I've got a building on the board that's going to earn me two coins. If I choose to collect income on my turn, instead of buying a deed, instead of placing a building, if I'm collecting income, I'm going to get five coins plus the number of coins that are on my commercial buildings that are already built in the city. So you need that money in order to buy the deeds. You need the deeds in order to place the building. So you're just taking one action and then the next player goes, the next player goes, and it's just gonna keep going around the circle. And you really will find yourself competing for space. So I've placed, I've, I've put the face of the board. This board is double-sided and this is the larger board that plays with up to five players. But the cards are going to be pulled out of the deck. So this, with, with only a two player count, you're just playing on these white squares. And then with three players, you get the blue ones on the outside and four. So, so the board does get bigger, but you really are competing for space. And you're going to, going to find yourself trying to create these large groups so you can place your large buildings that give you large bonuses. But the other players are going to be messing with those plans as you play. They might be buying those deeds that you want as well. Now, if you are playing with that monument expansion, there is a deck of monument cards. You're not going to be playing with every monument in the game. So you're going to choose three of these. Those buildings are going to be available for any of the players to build. They're unique. You can only build them once. The monuments have a requirement in order to be able to play them. You might have to have a certain number of buildings on the edge of the board. You might have to have a certain number of commercial buildings, etc. And then you can place one of these if you own the deeds that will allow you to do that. Some of these monuments are very big. You've got even a stadium here that you could build, you know, a gladiatorial arena. I would say. And then, I mean, they look beautiful on the board and they do give you some big points if you're able to build them. Once you get to the end of the third era, you're going to count up your points one final time. You don't get any extra income for those buildings. You get victory points for the buildings that give you coins instead. Uh, and then you count up. There are bonuses for having the largest population, which is quite a clever mechanism. Uh, the, all of the players are going to get points equal to the population of the player who's next in line who has the next largest population in front of them so if one player has a big lead the player who's directly behind him is going to still earn lots of points but the player who's in first place gets a bonus and that bonus escalates through each era of the game until you get to the final era you get 10 extra victory points 10 extra glory at the end if you're the one who has the most population so there really is a lot of competition to get those population buildings on the board but you also need the coins in order to build the deeds so you want those buildings to be there too uh, so your strategy i think is going to shift from the beginning of the game to the end where you might be focusing on earning money in the first era and then gradually shift over so that your economy is more focused on building the population instead
What skills, though, are you working on when you play Foundations of Rome? Well, this is another game that is very spatial in terms of uh, what you're working on here. You've really got to plan out where you're going, which deeds are you going to get so that you can build the building in the shape that you want. And it's got to be placed relative, you know, some of these civics buildings, you, you want to place them in order to maximize the number of points. So you want to be careful there too. So you really are looking across this grid and trying to figure out, you might be looking at the other players' coins to see which deeds they can afford to buy. Uh, and then you're considering, okay, well, which spaces do I want to fill up here? Or do I instead want to block another player from forming a large group uh, of, of deeds that he owns so that you can block them from playing one of these large buildings and getting a huge leap in population or in, in their economy and the coins that they can earn? It's also very much about planning and you're budgeting your coins. You're, you're budgeting your buildings in order to, okay, well, maybe you want to place a smaller one first so that you can overbuild on it and build something larger later on in the game where that's going to really help you out. And then you're, you've got some small buildings left over at the end that you might be able to place kind of around the map. You're also planning... The, the way that the rounds end and the way that the game ends, I think, is, a, is very clever because you're choosing to take that final deed. You have those three actions you can do. You, all of the players can go around the board saying, well, I'm going to take income, I'm going to take income, I'm going to take income. But as soon as the last deed is taken, well, now everybody gets one final turn and then the round is over. You're counting up those points. So the players are deciding when the game is going to end. So you're thinking, you're really planning ahead to try and make sure you've got the points that you want, but you want to grab that last deed to maybe prevent one of the other players from uh, playing that last building or, or getting that card that's going to allow them, getting the income maybe that's going to allow them to build something big and maybe overtake your population, for example. So those executive functions are the skills and behaviors that you need to work towards a goal. The spatial planning is like this puzzle that you're building and, and you're trying to make sure that you get the right pieces so you can put your pieces in the right places. And then you've got a little mini encyclopedia at the end of the rule book that explains what all of these monuments are and what they're about that explains these buildings and sort of their role uh, in Rome, in, in history. Uh, and that's something that, you know, I always really like. You get a little bit of specific kind of knowledge about a specific area. And in this case, it's Roman history, which I find very interesting. As I said, there are a bunch of modular rules and expansions that came in the box that I received, including those monuments also including there's some blessings that you could get that get mixed into the deck individual player roles that give players unique powers some mission or objective that the players might have to meet in order to get some extra points there's all kinds of extra there's there are cooperative rules there are lots of little extra tweaks and extra expansions or rules that you can add to the game that allows you to make it easier or more complicated depending on who you're playing with Final thoughts about Foundations of Rome and how does it compare to Skyrise? Well, this is another game that has amazing table presence. It's beautiful. The buildings are beautiful. Probably, especially when you look at the monuments, they're even more gorgeous than the Skyrise buildings. The cards, though, are not as premium as the Skyrise ones. You don't have the gold foil on the back. You know, you've got uh, a picture of you know, something that kind of reminds you of Rome, but it's not really the the fancy high quality um, foil embossed cards that you saw uh, on the Skyrise game recently. It's also a bit more of a ta table hog. Like I said, you need some room here to spread out and put your player boards and put the victory board and the deed board and and the actual game board itself where you're going to lay out the map. So it's absolutely gorgeous. The components are incredible uh, in this Sundrop version of the game. I really, really like that style of, of miniatures because it does give you... I'm not a painter. I'm not going to be painting these things, but it does give you some contrast and really makes the buildings pop out. Uh, you've got the metal coins, and the metal coins are really neat in this game because they are... I don't know if you'll be able to tell on the camera... 
uh, but they are a little scratched up and uneven. They look like the coins that would have been minted maybe back in the time that this game, uh, you know, is taking place. So I really, really like all the components here. Uh, it's really good, and it does compare well with the Skyrise buildings, except you've got all of these different sizes and, and different shapes, and the monuments are just incredible. The inserts are fantastic. You've got the player tray that reminds you of how much income you're earning each turn or how much your population is or how many victory points you're going to get uh, at the end of each era. So the trays are good and they keep everything in place. There's instructions for how do you put everything back. So, uh, I mean, it is a great big box with a whole lot of different pieces in it, uh, but it is pretty easy to put away and take out again to get ready to play a game. And again, we're talking about a, a game that has a fast play time, but there are fun, interesting, strategic choices. And that really hits a sweet spot for me. You know, we're, we're, we were talking about Skyrise, where games take about an hour and 15 minutes. This one is an hour to an hour and a half. It might be a bit longer if you're adding the extra modules. But um, what a great game with turns that move fairly quickly. Uh, and uh, and uh, as I said, a board that builds up and looks beautiful as you play. Those, those modular expansions give you lots of replayability and allow you to adjust the complexity, of course. Um, one thing I would say about this game versus Skyrise is that the calculation of the points is simpler. This is much more straightforward in terms of your plan and what it is that you're doing. You're trying to build these groups of deeds so that you can place the big buildings. You might be trying to block the other player from building a big group uh, of spots that they own so that you have some control over what could possibly go in those spaces, uh, but you're not worried necessarily about the particular neighborhood or the color of the, the spot that you're filling in. Sometimes with the Monuments expansion, you are concerned about the edge of the board or things like that, but it's, it's less complicated, I would say, in terms of figuring out how many points you're going to earn by doing these various things than Skyrise was. Uh, and so that means it's a little bit simpler. As I said, Skyrise, I think, was, was medium in terms of its complexity, and this is on the heavier end of light. So it kind of pokes up to medium as you add the extra uh, expansions, but it is a, a game that's more straightforward in terms of calculating out those scores. So I think the younger players are going to be able to get a handle on this one maybe a little bit easier uh, than um, they would with Skyrise. You do have that situation in this game that is different from the Roxley one where the players are determining when the round ends. So it's not when you, somebody runs out of buildings or anything like that. Here it's all about taking that final deed and you get to decide when that happens and I think that's a fun mechanism because there's some strategy involved there. Do you want to leave that deed on the table for a little bit longer so you can do some more things before the round ends and you start counting up points? Chasing population is also a great mechanism because you might not want, as, as the player who's in the lead, you might not want to have a huge lead because that's going to give the second place player some extra points, but you do want to get that bonus. So you find that you may be chasing uh, the population lead a, a little bit as you play through the game. Um, so and, and also there's no bidding involved here. So Skyrise was great because you had those numbers on your buildings and once a number was gone then you were done. You, you might not be able to play anything for the rest of the round because all of your numbers are small and the other players have buildings that are higher that could outbid you. Here it's just about the coins and do you have the money to buy the deed that you want. Now un, unpurchased deeds are going to slide down and become cheaper as you go. If somebody takes one you, you know a two coin deed all of the other deeds slide down. So three is now going to cost two and 10 is going to cost eight. So it does shrink things down and, and reduce the cost as players snap those things up. Uh, but there's no bidding. You're not going to be able to overtake another player. Uh, although, as I said, there are some, you know, rules around trading and things like that that you can play with the modular expansions. So two very, like superficially, Skyrise and Foundations of Rome are similar. They're both games about architects who are placing buildings on a city. One is much more about bidding and the, the scoring and how you earn those victory points is more complicated, whereas the other is about creating an economy where you can buy the deeds that you want 
to build those buildings that are almost building up your engine as you play through. So the actual gameplay is quite different, uh, but these are two games that are going to stay in my collection. They're beautiful. They hit the sweet spot of simple rules, quick to learn, quick enough to play, uh, but still gorgeous and strategic. Um, I, I mean, we are in a golden age, I think, uh, of board games. Now, for both of these games, uh, and maybe especially, I can't recall off the top of my head, maybe especially Foundations of Rome with that big 20-pound box, these games are expensive. So they're not a game that you're just going to walk into the store on a whim and with the money, the cash in your pocket, pick up this game. Uh, I think if you kind of max out Foundations of Rome, it is, you know, probably going to be in Canada over $200 to max this thing out. Plus there's an additional expansion that I didn't, it was so expensive, I didn't even get the extra expansion, uh, which is about Roads of Fortune, or I can't remember the name of it, but it does have to do with trading and diplomats and things coming along into the edge of the board. So it means the edge of the board becomes more important. So that's another additional module that you can add. But when I purchased this thing, I mean, it was already so expensive. I, I wasn't going to be able to pick up another one. But you, you can see... Every penny you've spent, you see it on the board. Uh, it is gorgeous and with the metal coins and things like that. I mean, it's if you like these kinds of games, it's definitely worth it. This is a game that has an 8.0, I think, on Board Game Geek. Skyrise was rated at 8.1, I believe. So they're very uh, on par in terms of their, their rankings, I guess, uh, in, in how people are, are seeing the quality of these games. Uh, but they're different enough that you can have both in your collection uh, and it, it's fun to play both of them depending on your group. So that in a nutshell, a very large nutshell, is Foundations of Rome and how it compares to Skyrise. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, you can of course leave them in the comment section below the video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. The previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the X handle on the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time.